The Team Fortress 2 timeline is full of iconic wars. The Gravel War, Man vs Machine and Classic Mercenaries vs the current ones are just three of many. These conflicts were all instigated and fueled by the same people, those being the Man family and the elusive administrator. There was however another family with a certain talent that not only aided them, but also fought in these wars. This family was extremely talented in the design and construction of advanced machinery. Some were used to help their teammates capture and hold regions, while others offered support, healing abilities, and in some cases, life extension. How was the Conagher family brought into the Gravel War? Why did they help the ridiculous request of a madman? And what role did they play in these conflicts? Here, we explore in the lore and story behind the engineer in Team Fortress. Way back in 1850, the Gravel War began at first as a petty squabble between twin brothers, Blutark and Redmond Mann. Their father's will, Zephaniah Mann, had left the family business, Manco, to his trusted aide, Barnabas Hale, and to his sons, he left them all of the land he owned in New Mexico to share. Zephaniah knew his sons would be incapable of this, and as predicted, they each hired mercenaries to capture and claim the land for them. The first team of mercenaries was composed of Stonewall Jackson, Abraham Lincoln, Sigmund Freud, Billy the Kid, Fu Manchu, Nikolai Tesla, John Henry, Davy Crockett, and Alfred Noble. Each team matched the other equally, and soon, the Gravel War became a stalemate for decades. As the years passed, the mercenaries grew older, and so too did the Mann brothers. It became apparent that without direct intervention, they would simply die before any ground was made. Then, Blutark had an idea. 40 years after this war had begun in 1890, Blutark asked for a meeting with Radagon Conagher. Radigan was a talented inventor and owner of Conagher's tool and munitions. Over his time, he had invented and created incredible machinery, and the walls of his store were home to various blueprints of future creations, one of which was a sentry gun, a deadly turret that could inflict immense damage on its target. Within Blutark's office, he explained to Radigan the predicament he was in, he needed to outlive his brother in order to claim this land, and it was up to the engineer to make this happen. To do this, Radagon was asked to build an immortality machine. As a man of few words, Radagon simply responded with, Alright. Upon his arrival back at his store, Radagon was surprised to discover that a woman had let herself in. This was Elizabeth. She had once been Zephaniah's maidservant, and in his will, he had left her his entire cache of Australium, a transformative element with incredible properties. Alongside this, a request that she keep the Australium hidden from a secret third man brother, Grey. Since Zephaniah's death, Elizabeth had done just this. She had spent her time collecting every pound of Australium she could, and she had kept the existence of Grey Secret from Blutark and Redmond. Elizabeth at first refused to explain who she was to Radigan. She, however, had an interesting proposition for him. This elusive woman needed the gravel war to continue for her own reasons. If Blutark were to outlive his brother, the war would end. She either needed them both alive or both dead. Elizabeth asked that Radigan not build the immortality device for Blutark, in which the engineer refused. So she offered him an alternate option as she held a bar of Australium in her hand. Elizabeth explained that Australium had been discovered in Australia, and it had allowed the country to outpace the rest of the world in technology with teleportation. 
cloaking, and most importantly, the entire spectrum of the moustache sciences. She asked him, if this element could make a genius out of an Australian, what could it do for a man of his faculties? This is where her proposition came in. Elizabeth offered Radigan £100 of Australium to help him build an immortality machine for Blutarch, but in return, he also had to build one for Redmond. This kept both of them alive, and thus, the gravel war would continue. This was a unique opportunity, and with it, it took Radigan four years to develop and construct them. Over time, he noticed that his proximity and use of the Australium had positive side effects. He became smarter, and this influenced his designs and ability to create as an engineer. He showed this in his fascination with the late Abraham Lincoln. Although he had passed at the hands of John Booth, Radigan still designed contraptions that could have saved him. A hat with a hidden gun, a teleporter, and a swinging chair. Radigan's interaction with the Australium not only altered his mind, but it also changed his body. He became taller, stronger, and grew a fantastic moustache. This element essentially transformed him into a stereotypical Australian. He drank a lot of Blue Streak beer and invented technology that would become incredibly useful in the many wars to come. The Frontier Justice and Southern Hospitality would become favourites for future engineer generations. The Sentry Wrangler allowed him to remotely control his sentry turret, and the Gunslinger robotic arm gave those who used it the ability to construct a small sentry within seconds. These inventions were just a few of those thought of and developed by Radigan Conagher as a result of his meeting with Elizabeth and interaction with Australium. His greatest creation, however, would come in the form of his son. As Fred Conagher grew up, he followed in the footsteps of his father. He showed an interest in the development and creation of machinery, and he even grew a close friendship with a sniper. In around 1912, his father passed away. Throughout Radigan's life, he had kept his relationship with the Mann family and his knowledge of Australium a secret, even to the point in which he asked for his blueprints and other secrets to be buried with him. As 1930 arrived, the original mercenaries of the Gravel War had all either died or grown too old to fight, so Blutarch and Redmond hired new mercenaries to keep the war going. Unknown to Fred, his family was connected to the Mann family through his father, and as a result, was given the opportunity to join this fight. So he did, and so did his sniper, Fred. Fred was essential on this team. His role was simple, area denial, defense, and support. To do this, he used scrap metal to construct an automated sentry gun that, when fully upgraded, fired rockets at his enemies. His dispenser allowed his team to access ammo and armor without the need to travel all the way back to the resupply room. Fred even installed a feature that notified him if an enemy unit used his dispenser, in which he could remotely blow it up to kill them, and his teleporter system allowed his teammates quick access to the front lines of the war. Fred the engineer repaired the armor of his teammates with his wrench, as he also defended himself and his constructions with a double barrel shotgun, a railgun, standard, and EMP grenades. For years, both Fred and Sniper grew frustrated with spies. They not only destroyed Fred's constructions, but they were also able to disguise themselves as other people on their team. To combat this, Fred plucked out Sniper's eyes and replaced them with prosthetic eyes that gave him the ability to see through anything. Although this kept him up at night as he could see through his eyelids, it was worth it to see the spies coming. Fred was an engineer, not a typical warrior like a heavy or a demoman, so he kept his distance. 
although not at the front of the battle, his devices were essential in their victory. For the decades to come, Fred Conagher fought alongside these classic mercenaries, and off the battlefield, he also had a son. As the third generation in the Conagher lineage, young Del Conagher showed an interest in the family business just like his father and his father before him. The way he saw it, engineers liked to solve problems. Del grew up in Bee Cave, Texas and at a young age, his father gifted him with his first pair of engineer goggles. Alongside his interests with invention, Dell also took an interest in art, in which he was able to easily spot a Kikasso and learned the banjo. His natural curiosity led him to excel in his studies as he earned 11 hard science PhDs that only increased his ability to design, build and repair a variety of machines. By the early 1970s, the second wave of the gravel war had come to an end. The classic mercenaries had grown old, just like those before them, and the Mann brothers once again hired a new group of soldiers to fight in this war. In the place of the engineer, Dell took over from his father. As the latest bright mind in the engineer family, Dell improved upon the designs of his father's devices. He even stated that his favourite equation equated to how powerful a sentry gun could be. The more he upgraded it, the more powerful it became. In terms of his upgrades, Dell's sentry gun version 2.1 followed a similar three-stage setup that his father's did. It began as a semi-automatic automated turret, with some scrap metal, various other pieces of equipment, and a few wax from his wrench. He replaced the semi-automatic with fully automated rotational minigun barrels, and for the final upgrade, Dell installed a missile targeting system. Fred's sentry gun had one huge limitation that Dell had also sought to fix. It could only fire in one direction. It had to be constructed to face the enemy. Dell gave his sentry the ability to rotate 360 degrees, and with the installation of a motion tracking device, it attacked any enemy it detected around it. Dell also improved the dispenser. His Dispensomatic 9000 allowed his teammates to acquire ammo, it deployed scrap metal and restored health only to his team, unless a spy was disguised as one of them. However, he did also remove the dispenser's ability to restore armour and notify him when an enemy had used the device. The engineer's teleporters were one of his most important creations. In order to help his team become more efficient, Dell's upgrades reduced the recharge time from what was a standard 10 seconds of Fred's design down to 3. Despite all of these upgrades, Dell still suffered from the attacks of spies, who, just like him, had discovered new technologies to take down a sentry gun, dispenser and teleporter. The most crucial in a spy's arsenal being the Electro Sapper. Dell had become the perfect engineer, and had done well to follow in his father's footsteps. His ability to design, construct and improve was also something that Blutark Man hoped would help him. For over a century, the Man Brothers had been stuck in a stalemate, kept alive by the immortality machines designed by Radigan Conagher. Blutark, however, found issues with the machine. The immortality machine did keep him alive, the problem was how it functioned. The device effectively waited for Blutark, or Redmond, to die, and upon detection of this, it discharged a burst of energy to bring them back. This had been effective for the past 100 years, but Blutark had noticed that each time he died, it took longer and longer for him to return. To fix this problem, and to evade his fear of permanent death, Blutark ordered for a meeting with Dell in his office. Within, the bright young engineer was told about how his grandfather had built the Man Brothers each an immortality machine. 
Bluetack also explained that the machine was a lemon. It did not work properly and because Dell was the grandson of the person that had built it and because he was currently on his payroll in the gravel war, it was his job to fix it. Dell had been unaware of his grandfather's relationship with the Mann brothers or that he had built these machines. He feared that if he touched the machines, he would just kill the brothers. Without the blueprints, he would be going in blind. Blutark had already prepared for this. 60 years before, he had dug up Radigan's corpse and looted it. Over these years, he had spent a small fortune in an attempt to decipher the old engineer's scribblings, but had had no luck. Blutark presented Dell with his grandfather's notes and ordered him to use them to fix the machine. He also asked that if Dell were to find anything else of interest in these notes, he was to bring this knowledge directly back to him. Alone, Dell explored his grandfather's documents. Inside, he found Radigan's notes on the life extender machine. Interestingly enough, Dell found that Radigan had also written down the dates of when he had constructed them. July 17th, 1894 for Bluetarks and August 3rd of the same year for Redmond's. There was, however, one more. A third machine built in April of an unknown year for an unknown person. Alongside this, Dell also found a map of Australian caches, very likely something he had worked through with Elizabeth. This third life extension machine was also very likely built for her, but hers was different. With his grandfather's blueprints, his father's teachings, and his PhDs, Del Conagher went on to develop and construct incredible devices and weaponry for his role in the Gravel War. The Jug, the Eureka Effect, and the Widowmaker, just to name a few. As for his ability to fix the life extender machines, as time would pass, it was clear he did not complete this task. It had been over a hundred years since the gravel war had begun. Each brother was still in the same position they had been in when it had started. The only difference now was that they were being kept alive by a machine. Then, the war came to a sudden end after the reappearance of the secret third man-brother, Grey. Grey did not care for his brothers or the land they fought over. He instead wanted what was owed to him. The company his father had given away to Barnabas Hale, Manco. Grey was much smarter than his brothers. Over his time in secrecy, he had used Australium to construct his own lightweight immortality device, a device that not only kept him alive, but also kept him safe from the aging process. This device was powered by Australium, and as a result of Elizabeth's quest to hoard all of the substance and keep it away from Grey, the secret brother had realized he was running low. There are still theories about who or what Elizabeth is. It is very likely that Elizabeth used a secret, advanced immortality device constructed by Radigan to also stay alive and, over the years, changed her name and burned records to hide her true identity. At this point in time, the administrator held a very similar resemblance to Elizabeth and also had the same goal, to keep the gravel war going, to hoard all of the Australium she could, and most importantly, keep it away from Grey. Regardless, upon his return, Grey murdered his brothers and set his sights on Manco. The death of Bluetark and Redmond Man put an end to the Gravel War, and without the war, the mercenaries no longer had someone to fight for, yet a new war was on the way. To protect his company, the current CEO of Manco, Saxton Hale, rehired all of the mercenaries that had fought in the Gravel War. This new wave pushed Dell and the rest of the team to protect Manco regions from hordes of robotic imitations of themselves created by Grey, one of which, the Mecha Engineer, was shown to be the most intelligent of the other robots. 
This war soon turned into another stalemate, in which Grey used another tactic to claim the company. He invoked the Man Co Challenge. This stated that the CEO of any other company could take Manco legally if they beat the current CEO in unarmed combat. Gray himself did not intend to fight Saxton, he instead had his daughter, Olivia, do it. Saxton refused to fight a child, and as a result, the ownership of Manco was left to Olivia Mann and her father. Once again, the mercenaries found themselves without jobs. That was, except for Dell. As the other mercenaries started their new lives, Dell instead spent his time with the administrator. For six months, he helped her clear every Manco vault that contained Australium. Alongside this, he adapted her immortality device. These did run on Australium, and even the administrator was starting to run low. She still had a mission to complete that, even now, has not been revealed. And to do this, she asked her assistant, Miss Pauling, to track down the rest of the mercenaries to find the last known cache of Australium on the planet. Alongside this, Grey felt pressure. He had hoped his acquisition of Manco would allow him access to the Australium within the vaults, yet the administrator always appeared to be one step ahead of him. So, he hired a group to track her down, the classic mercenaries. Sure, they were older, but they were still effective. In a secret location, Dell managed to upgrade the administrator's immortality device from Mark IV to Mark V. Since the gravel war had ended just six months before, she had aged extremely quickly, very likely a side effect of a lack of Australium. This upgrade allowed the device to function off of just a quarter of the substance it once had. The administrator appreciated the help of not only Dell, but the whole Conagher family. Her device had been upgraded over these years. What is unclear is whether Fred also helped her. The family of engineers had given her more time than she believed she deserved. She just needed a little more time to settle an old debt. The duo soon heard from Miss Pauling that the final cache of Australium they had hoped to use had been sent into space. This meant that the last piece she had on her was the last known on Earth. Out in Grey Gravel Co, a fight had begun between the classic mercenaries and the current mercenaries. Fred of course helped out where he could, but in his older age, he was limited. Over his period of dormancy, he had crafted robotic legs to help him move around. Although the classic mercs had been hired by Grey to capture the current mercenaries to seek out the location of the administrator, the classic heavy instead took it upon himself to remove Grey's immortality device. Why seek money when you can live forever? This changed the course of the war, and he asked Fred to create more of the devices. In response, Fred claimed he had no idea how to do that. The Heavy wanted all of the current mercenaries dead, and a war ensued. Fred kept his distance, and for the first time in this timeline, a war ended fairly quickly. The current mercenaries took out all of the classic mercenaries, that was apart from Fred, whose fate has never been revealed. In the administrator's secret base, Dell finished off her upgrades and offered her the last piece of Australium available. He explained that with it, she would be able to live for around five to six months. The administrator, however, had a different plan. To the surprise of Dell, she used the Australium to make herself young once again. That was only in appearance, just like she had done many times before. In doing this, she had cut down her life from six months to just over an hour. The administrator knew what she had done, and she told Dell that an hour would be more than enough time to settle an old debt once and for all. As of now, the debt she spoke of is unknown. 
As with most Valve creations, this story may never reach a conclusion. Dell and the rest of the Conagher family line were essential in keeping the Mann family alive, and it would appear that's behind the scenes. Also Elizabeth, Helen, or another name she may have used. The potential future death of Helen would free Dell and his future children from a war that had continued for over a hundred years. As for the fate of Dell and his father, it is unknown. Fred is believed to have survived the war between the classic and current mercenaries, as Dell continued to help out the administrator from a secret location. What we can say is that Del Conagher, the engineer, would, if given the opportunity, continue to fight by erecting his sentry, dispenser, and teleporters to offer support to his teammates. All he has to do is watch out for those spies. The engineer is the best class in Team Fortress. Fight me. When I was younger, I could not wait for the school bell to ring so that I could rush home, load up my Xbox 360, drop in the orange box disc, and hit Team Fortress 2. Back then, I played as Engineer in my bedroom as my sister played Engineer or Pyro in hers. Now it's pretty easy to load up Steam. But back then, on the orange box version, it was almost a completely different game. Those nights where you would be defending the last control point on Dust Bowl, and your sentry and teleporter is helping your team out, you could not move your gun or repair it from afar with the rescue ranger because those features had not been introduced yet. You were stuck with the basic equipment. It was a completely different time. The Engineer is such a great class to play as. It was the perfect class for me. Someone that likes the story of first person shooters but is not very good at them. I like that Valve added a class like this. The Engineer has so many incredible weapons and so many playstyles. I've been told I'm an aggressive Engineer. It works, especially in Man vs Machine. There are a ton of weapons I have not mentioned in the video, but there were just too many to mention without just listing them off. The Team Fortress 2 story itself is brilliant. Three generations of engineer, each one connected to the same family and to the administrator. I have seen a lot of conversation and speculation about Elizabeth the maidservant or Helen and if they are the same person. From what we've seen in the comics, it is pretty clear that they are. The Conagers just helped her stay alive. It seems through a secret relationship that began that night in Radigan Conagher's store. I will cover the administrator at some point. If we do get that comic that has been teased to be coming for years now, I would love to see more of the relationship between the Conagher family tree and Elizabeth. It would be interesting. It is clear that a lot of things happened behind the scenes. This was the lore and story behind The Engineer. If you enjoyed this, then please leave a like, leave your thoughts in the comments section below, and even share it with another Team Fortress fan. If you disagreed or generally disliked this, then also let me know in the comments and leave a dislike. I appreciate you watching this video, regardless of how you felt about it. Subscribe for more content like this too. I cover Half-Life, Doom, and a bunch of puzzle games. As usual, I would like to thank my amazing Gold Tier patrons and channel members, the best resistance fighters you could ask for. Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, Chicken Guy 791, Ruba Mendoza, Duke, Toadnut, Oran X, Azu, Karatana, AJ, Verona, Comfy, and BG Games. Now, what did you think of this lore? What class do you play as? And what would you like me to cover next? This is where our story ends. Check back next week for a new one.